Okay, we're live on camera. Um, and uh, so, just from the observer, just from a Course in Miracles perspective, I'd say that the course is three, the lessons are 365 lessons to get to a place, you could say, where you don't longer need the lessons because you're in a place which is beyond form. So in the course lessons you hear, you know, you're arriving at a place which is formless and which is timeless and which is limitless. So all the lessons, I, I would say, 365 lessons, are releasing the ego. I mean, I'd say in a way, in a simplistic term, the ego is that thing which creates fear and separation. You know, there's different grades of fear and separation. But when there's fear and separation, it's a cutoff from the absolute truth. And, uh, if, and what's the opposite of separation? The opposite of separation is the... Um, well, the Course uses the word oneness um, or light. But uh, it's where fear and separation no longer exist as what one is. So, um, how do you... So, in this tool, what we're doing is we're releasing... Uh, now, I use the word identification. If identification doesn't work, hooking into something. You can hook into thoughts, or you can hook into the body. You can hook into time. You can identify with thoughts, the body. So, now, the... The first thing I'd say with um, the, the simplistic mechanism, it's very, very simple, the observer. And I always, I tend to use the mug, the classic mug. Now this, we're on camera, so if you don't want, if you don't want your voice on camera, don't speak. But um, this is a mug. It's a meaningless mug. Uh, is anybody here the mug? Is anybody confused that they are a mug? No. Okay, so good. A mug is an object, a, a mug is an object which is being observed and there's no confusion, nobody's confused they are a mug. They, everyone is in recognition, they're observing the mug and there's space between the mug and what one is, yes? We're in agreement? Mm -hmm. So this is, the, this is the tool of the observer. When there is an object, if an object is observed, one is the observer of the object, one is not the object, there's that clarity. You know, no one is confused, they are the mug. Uh, so, and you can see that a mug is a meaningless object. I th unless there's a mug addict in the room, you see. It's a meaningless <laughs> object, you see. So it's very clear to see with detachment that, you know, there's no sort of confusion that one could be the mug. Okay, so the next thing is thoughts. Oh, another thing, I'll do with the mug, sorry, yeah. So, if I, if I pass this mug in front of anyone, is, it, is anyone the mug, if I just make it pass by? No, see, even if it passes by, it's not. If I hide the mug, is anyone the mug? No, okay, good, okay. So this is what objects can do. They can pass before you, uh, they can not be there for a while, or they can be right in front of you and stay in front of you. Like, if I hold the mug here constantly, is anyone the mug? No, okay. Okay, so next is thoughts. Okay, so thoughts are passing by, and sometimes there's no thoughts, or sometimes there's many thoughts, but they're objects, you know, there's different thoughts, different objects pass by. Uh, there's a lesson in the course, like seeing things pass by on a conveyor belt. Now, is, is there, here, as the, as the thoughts pass by, one is aware of thoughts, is there observing? Is there observing of thoughts? Not if you experience observing. Okay. If okay. Now this is very important because it's a spiritual experience to recognise there is a space, there is an observing of thoughts. Is the observing of thoughts a thought? No. Good. Then that would be incorrect because there's not a thought thinking thoughts. The observer, this, this has to be experienced. Something is witnessing thoughts. There is a, you can be in the position of the observer of thoughts. And once that's done, now if you rehook or identify into thought, you're back into the thoughts.
But that, when you're in the observer of thoughts, it's recognized that thoughts pass by, but one is not thoughts. You can still be here after a thought is gone, but, you know, a thought is not you. You know, the observer is, that which you are it can, is always here all the time. Anything that passes before it can be a thing that's here or not here, but it, you can exist without it, okay? That's a spiritual experience. Uh, and if you, didn't, if you didn't get that experience, it's because there's too much interest and identification with thoughts. And so you get enmeshed. When something is very meaningful, you can get enmeshed and it seems to be hard to separate and get that distance observing of the thoughts. Hence, one of the first lessons in A Course in Miracles is all my thoughts are meaningless. Because if there's a special thought, one goes back into the thoughts, you see. But the next thought you have is meaningless as well. So they can, you can stay in a state of observing thoughts. Okay, the body. Here's another interesting one. Uh, awareness of the body. If one is aware of the body, it's like one is aware of a shape. Yeah? Uh, you know, how am I aware of the body? How am I feeling I am a body? How am I feeling contracted or limited to a body? Now, remember, this is a mug, has a shape. Is anyone this shape that I'm holding up? No. no. So the observer of a shape is not the shape. Yeah? So if, is there an observing now of the body? Yeah. So what's observing the shape or the limited sensation of the body? Now, if you just keep doing this, some of you look a bit confused, but um, it's recognized, oh, that which observes the body is not the body. Because the body is actually an object. You know, like if I hold this mug, like it's got a shape, the observer of the shape is not the shape. Observing of a shape cannot be the shape, limited to the shape. So if I experience myself as limited into a body, then there is that which is observing that. And as soon as you, that's another spiritual experience. The, I am not the body. There is observing of this limited vessel is being, limited, is being observed. So you can, so the observer of thoughts is not thought. The observer of the body is not another body. It's not another body looking at this body. There's, a, there's an observer. Now, location. Is there any experience of location? If there's an experience of location, what's observing the experience of location? You see? So, if there is, like, if it feels like, oh, there's location in this part of the room, but something is witnessing that, is, is the witnesser of location in location? Does that which witness locate, and even if the witnesser of a location is in location, then what's witnessing that location? Does location exist? No, it doesn't exist. So that which witnesses location does not, is locationless. That which witnesses the body is bodiless. That which witnesses thought is thoughtless. That's, these are experiences. As you keep, you know, this practice is just understood from the muck, you see, and then you do the self, it's called self-inquiry. Mana Maharishi talked about it. Um, you know, what am I? Can I be a thought? Or am I that which observes, you know, am I that before thoughts? Am I that before body? Am I that before location? Now here's an interesting one, time. You know, the ego tracks time. Something has a sense of time. You know, something has a sense of seconds are passing, minutes are passing. But that sense of time, that tracking of time, there is an observer of a sense of time. There is something observing or witnessing time. If one goes to the observing of time, and this is an experiential question, does time exist? It doesn't exist. Because you have to you have to pick something up for it to exist. You know. So you have to pick up the body for yourself to experience yourself as being a limited body. You have to pick up thoughts, identify with thoughts 
latch on to thoughts, hook into thoughts, to experience yourself as being a thinker. You have to experience, you have to uh, identify with location to experience location. So with this process, what you're doing is you're finding out if your true nature is limited. Is my, am I a body? Am I my thoughts? Am I a label? Am I an illness? Even I feel an illness. What's observing the symptoms of the illness? Is that which witnesses the symptoms? If I'm experiencing tiredness, well, you know, what's witnessing the tiredness? Is that which observes tiredness tired? You know, is the, you know, like tiredness is like a mug. Sometimes there's tiredness here, sometimes there's not tiredness here. But then what watches tiredness come and go? Is the watcher of tiredness coming and going? Is that ever tired? So, so the true nature, can the true nature be limited? And if you feel, this is the practice that I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating, if you do, if you go to that which is you're currently witnessing, if that experience is limited to thoughts, body, sensations, feelings, then what's witnessing that? And is the witnesser of that limited? And if ultimately, is your, the ultimate experience of self, is it limited by thoughts, time, body, sensations? Is there a tiredness there? Is there any kind of constriction there? So, I'm putting this off.